I don't know if we have sound. <laughs> I have a Bluetooth thing. <laughs> We're experimenting. You have a corgi though. And that's what counts, right, Biscuit? Good morning, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and telling Tin T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And um, if anybody's listening, can you just tell me if you can hear me because I'm using this new voice thing. <laughs> and I've only been setting it up for like a little while. So uh, while I was doing that, a friend called last night and I hung up on her accidentally when I tried to turn it off so I could talk with my phone. That wasn't good, but now I know that how that works. <laughs> so. Hopefully this is working. This is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi. We're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi, and it has just been so damp and raw and cold here. I just can't even go into the lightweight sweaters. I mean, I, I sit here and shiver all day if I don't put on like a serious sweater like this one. But I'm tired of dressing like Amy in Big Bang. <laughs> like I wanna go back to my clothes that I like. So we're gonna continue talking. Can you guys hear me? Tell me if you can't hear me because I have no way to know if this thing is working. Um, <clears throat> and also I think it was on all night so I'm not sure it's even charged at this point. You might just be hearing my voice with the phone which is really not very, um, the phone doesn't pick up the voice very well. So we're gonna do one more kind of breathing today. A lot of people have been saying they have a lot of anxiety, they're getting more and more stressed as things get worse and worse. And um, quite a few people have written to me either personally or on these posts and said that they find these really relaxing and helpful and grounding for their day. So thank you, you guys, for that. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna try to keep doing them every day. I have a whole list of things to talk about um, to help us stay calm during this time. I got news last night and this morning about the place where I teach yoga for the veterans. Um, they have 11 people died, 11 more positive, 25 tests out pending, five workers positive. It's, a, it's gonna be a devastating thing. Can you hear me, Jerry? Um, that place has one of the largest groups of World War II surviving veterans in the country. Um, and the history and the stories that we're losing there is just heartbreaking. So I can understand how people feel in their own communities. There's so many nursing homes affected in New Jersey and across the country and New York City is in terrible trouble and um, it's predicted to get worse in many places. So what can we do? We have to focus on what we have in the here and now and our breath is part of that. And in Buddhist practice, meditation and breath is everything. And in many other traditions as well. And a lot of the ideas of intention and prayer and meditation overlap. So these are spiritual practices that have been with our um, species for centuries. So today we're gonna do, um, I don't have another name for it, but they're called four, seven, eight breaths. So what that means is you breathe in for a count of four, hold it for a count of seven, and then breathe out for a count of eight. Now what this does for you in the long exhale is get you to really get all the stale air out of your lungs so that they can really open up and invite in the new clean air that you're gonna inhale in your next breath. And that can help your lungs health and uh, flexibility and at this time when we're worried about respiratory viruses, our breathing is really important and becoming aware of your own breathing is really important. You don't wanna just breathe shallowly in the upper part of your body, out of your lungs. You wanna use your stomach and your diaphragm and your whole body to take breaths so that you do um, use your lungs to their greatest capacity and also so that you function properly in your physiology. So. We're gonna try a couple of these. Everyone inhale for four breaths. Hold for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then exhale for eight. And 
and you might have noticed me on your last count of eight, you're really using your stomach muscles to push out that last little bit of air. And I'm doing this in the way that we um, do pursed lip breathing so that you breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your pursed lips. Um, it's fun to do that with kids because you can make funny noises. But it also uh, really helps um, facilitate doing the four, four, seven, eight breath. So again, it's in through your nose for four. <coughs> I was, knew I was going to cough. It loosens up your sinuses and things when you do this. Breathe in for four. Hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, and exhale for eight. And if you're a swimmer, you probably are used to doing some kind of breath like this um, because you get that gulp of air, which may only be for a count of four or less when you're swimming, and then you hold it throughout your stroke, which is about seven. And then when you come up, you exhale a lot because you need to really fill your lungs with the oxygen and then you suck it back in for your next stroke. So anybody who's done a lot of swimming um, probably just naturally has an ability to do this breath more than someone for whom this is new. So let's try a few more rounds. Breathe in through your nose for four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then exhale for eight. So you can try that with your pets. Um, it is a very relaxing breath for them. You can see Tristan's kind of just chilling out here, not like some of the other kinds of breathing where he got a little more excited. But this kind of breathing has the same benefits as all of the breathing techniques that we've talked about. You know, they're, um, they really help uh, relax your whole system. They help balance your system. They get you out of that fight flight response. Um, it enhances your lung function and your respiratory function. And there's been plenty of studies on different kinds of breathing techniques and their benefits for the body. Um, so there are many, many benefits from doing this aside from the relaxation. So it's four, seven, eight, inhale for four, hold for seven, three, four, five, six, seven, and then exhale for eight. A tablecloth is blowing in front of me um, and Tristan's intrigued by that. So I guess I have a better exhale than I thought I did. And I'm a person who has not always had great lung capacity. I've had pneumonia quite a few times. Um, and when I was in physical therapy school 20 something years ago, 25 years ago, I had to do a two mile run. We had to do the president's fitness test. And you know, I was pretty old. <laughs> I hadn't done much running in my life. And I started training with my horse running up and down the road because I knew a one mile route there. And I started like all of us with running, with run walking. And of course the horse got very excited about this and he had a huge trot and I had to really scramble to keep up with him. Uh, thankfully I'm running now with a corgi, much shorter. We run about the same pace and look how short his legs are. <laughs> so my lung capacity has really improved. So I'm not surprised to see that my tablecloth is blowing on my exhale. That's a good thing. So you can try this. It's really fun to do it with like a pinwheel or something that you can blow and watch it turn or even just taking like a piece of paper like this for your exhale and watching it blow. That can be fun if you have little kids. So try the four, seven, eight breathing. It's good to help you relax in these times of stress. And we will be back tomorrow for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. I hope this Bluetooth is working. I'm not sure. Danny, can you hear me all right? <laughs> and uh, we're gonna continue on. I have a whole list of uh, relaxing, decreasing anxiety things. And if this Bluetooth is working, I really wanna show you all some yoga that you can do with your dog for like 10 minute uh, intervals. Uh, because it's really beneficial for you and your dog, and it's fun. And then you can say something when people talk to you about goat yoga, you can be like, I do dog yoga, or cat yoga, or rabbit, or guinea pig yoga. It's all good. All right, thanks for joining us today for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi, where we looked at four, seven, eight breath. Give it a try. 
I find it to be one of the most relaxing of the many options we have. Thanks for joining us. Oh, good, you can hear me.